Hey guys, so a classmate asked, can you give an example of Lachatier's principle in real life? To begin, let's recap what Lachatier's principle is. This principle states that if we put stress on a system in equilibrium, the equilibrium will shift to relieve that stress. We gave three conditions in which this stress can be applied, either by changing concentration, changing volume slash pressure, or changing temperature. Now, these shifts in equilibrium are important to know not only to solve some chemistry problems, but also for processes that affect our daily lives. The Haber-Bosch process is such an example. This process allowed for the mass production of plant fertilizers from the production of ammonia, as represented by this chemical formula. Nature performs such a process already, with two steps of the nitrogen cycle, nitrogen fixation and nitrification, allowing for the nitrogen in the air to be converted into ammonia for the plants to use. While Mother Nature uses bacteria and certain enzymes like nitrogenase, the Haber-Bosch process requires a more industrialized method with very specific conditions. Namely, the process must occur at 400 to 450 degrees Celsius temperature with 400 atmospheres of pressure and with an iron catalyst. Why such conditions? Well, for every equilibrium expression, there is a forward and reverse reaction, meaning that while we create ammonia, we also break down ammonia. However, we only want to create ammonia, so such conditions are required. But how did we determine these conditions? Well, that's where Le Chatier's principle can help us. Let's look at our first condition, temperature. We know that this equation is exothermic, meaning that heat is produced. So when we lower the temperature, the system will produce more ammonia to generate more heat and reach equilibrium. But as you may have noticed, 400 to 450 degrees Celsius isn't exactly cold. This is because a lower temperature also slows down the rate at which the nitrogen and hydrogen particles collide to form ammonia, meaning that we can produce ammonia, but it would take forever to do so. So 400 to 450 degrees Celsius has been determined to be the best temperature to produce as much ammonia as possible as quickly as possible. Now onto pressure. We want pressure to be the highest amount possible. We can understand why in two ways. First, the higher the pressure, the more likely that nitrogen and hydrogen gas particles actually collide and combine to create ammonia. Second, in terms of Le Chatier's principle, a higher pressure means that there are an increase in moles. To offset such stress, we shift to the side with less moles. As seen through our equilibrium reaction, there are more moles of reactants than products, meaning that we shift to the right to increase the number of products, which is ammonia. Yet, the pressure cannot be too high, as there isn't enough money to fund for producing and maintaining really high pressures in the industrial process. Thus, the middle ground was decided to be 200 atmospheres. Finally, onto the catalyst. Catalysts don't have any effect on the equilibrium expression, nor on the amount of ammonia concentration produced. Its only function is to speed up the reaction, since in the absence of a catalyst, the reaction is too slow, in that virtually no reaction occurs at any sensible time. Therefore, it is with all these components that the Haller process has been effective in feeding most of the world's population, with its development relating back to Le Chatier's principle. However, it is important to note that there are many real-world drawbacks to this process. First, Fritz Haber's implementation of breaking and bonding elements were not only key in food production, but also chemical weapons that were used in World War II, making Haber the father of chemical weaponry. Additionally, the creation of ammonia through the Haber process takes up 2% of the entire world's energy, as the conditions to sustain production take a toll on the resources available. Lastly, Overuse of fertilizers lead to overgrowth of algae in bodies of water due to wastewater and runoff combining with these nutrients. When algae decomposes, it takes up a lot of oxygen in the water, leaving little oxygen left for other aquatic life. These allow for the creation of dead zones, which are hypoxic or low oxygen areas in the world's oceans and large lakes, caused by excessive nutrient pollution from human activities. By understanding these drawbacks, scientists are continuing to develop innovative ways to efficiently and effectively produce fertilizers that will aid in the feeding of our world, without destroying it, by improving on such aspects of the Haber-Bosch process. I hope this video helped you to understand more about the Haber-Bosch process and its connection to Le Chatier's principle.